Hello everybody, Papu here. Today is July the 20th. It's the feast day of the prophet Elias, or prophetess Elias. Of course, my name is Elia, and I'm celebrating my name day today. I was named after my grandfather, who was Elias, and his grandfather, my grandfather's grandfather, his name was Theodoros. Uh, I want to tell you of things that I read about the prophet Elias. First of all, I want to send you a photograph of an icon of the prophet Elias. There he is. That's him. Well, he was born 900 year, uh, the year 900 before Christ. And he was born in a small village in today's Israel. And when he was born, his father had a vision. He saw, I guess in his sleep, he saw two men dressed in white they were dressing the little boy in fire and they were feeding fire. So he went to the priests and asked them what does all this mean? And they told him that his son is going to be a prophet and he's going to punish Israel who didn't believe in God, in one God, with double-edged sword and fire. He kind of dedicated his life to one God. He was fighting all the priests at that time who did not preach the existence of one God. And uh, he got into trouble with the then queen of the area, Isabella, who was not uh, did not believe in one God. She was idololatist. He also performed some miracles by praying to God, to his God. He performed miracles. One of them was that when Isabella was uh, persecuted, he went in, in a house where was a woman, a poor woman, that had a little bread and a little water. But with his prayers, that little bread lasted them for a long time. And also she had a little boy who was sick and uh, died. He prayed to God and the little boy came back to life. He said that he, he also threatened the king the time that if they don't stop uh, persecuting the priests that preach one God, he says, I'm going to stop the rain coming for three and a half years. And it happened. That's what they say. Three, hundred, three and a half years didn't rain at all. So, uh, he can also said he can order a fire to come down from the sky. They had a, a competition with the other priests about sacrificing. And then when they got ready to light the fire, the fire won't light on their, their side. In his side, he put he put the, the wood there and watered it, and it was all soft and wet, and he prayed to God, and a thunderbolt came from the sky and lit the fire. I don't know what the significance of this one is, but that's what they say. When, uh, when Isabella was after him to capture him, God directed him to go to a little creek by the Jordan River and hide in the cave over there. 
he was hiding in there and he was drinking water from the creek and they said uh, Kurunes, the black birds, used to come every morning and bring him food. And when the water disappeared from there, then he walked barefoot through this de desert and went up to the mount in the Sinai Desert. Probably it was the same mount um, that uh, Moses saw God up there. And God revealed himself also to Elia the prophet. There he had disciples and teaching them the existence of one God and only one God. He said he did not die one day a chariot with uh, fire coming around it came and picked him up and ascended him to, to heaven. He's uh, one of three people that has been reported that he did not die. He went to heaven alive. Anyway, that's the story of Elia the, the prophet. Now, when I was growing up in Achiki, near Achiki, not very near, a couple hours of walking distance is a mountain, and on top of it, there is a little church, Elia, the prophet Elia. There is a mountain, and there is a wide spot up there that's the church. So every year we walk past the Nade Villa Escalida and walk all the way up there and walk up to the mountain and uh, light a candle. And then we used to, because the mountain is steep on the other side, we used to throw rocks and watch them roll all the way down. At the bottom of the, uh, the mountain, there was a farmer. And I remember he used to try to grow and have watermelon ready on that day. And he would give us some pieces of watermelon. We also would collect a maranda, some flowers that dried up and stayed dried year round. They were bluish color. Bring him home and have him in a vase, the Amaranda. We also pick up some uh, wick for, for the candles and also pick up uh, dry from the fields oregano, origani. And we we're very proud to do all that and bring him home. And we used to do that every year. And uh, when I was taking the kids, Leah and Michael Stokoryo, a couple times we went all the way up there. Yeah, and coming down, I remember we had to hold hands, there were four or five of us, because if you slide down, you, you're going all the way down, there's no way of stopping. Anyway, that's the story of Prophet Leah. Bye-bye, Jetukron.